let's talk about some of the problem you will encounter while taking care of patients with central lines. These are some of the problems that nurses will call you about. First of all, that sometimes the nurse will call you, hey, I'm not able to get any blood back from the triple lumen catheter, for example. And remember we talked about this in the PIC line video, is the first and most important thing when somebody, when the nurse calling you about this, the question is the catheter still, is it still in the vein? And I tell the nurses, please do not use it for now until we confirm. Usually those with central line, if I'm in doubt about their position, I go and order chest x-ray first. If the line is in good position, still no drawback, then the line may be clotted. Again, this is way less common compared to PIC line. Can I use cath flow or alteplase? Yes, you can use the cath flow or alteplase and see the same thing we applied in um, in pick line we can use that and still if no success then take it and replace it now if it's not in good position on the chest x-ray and there's no draw block a drawback of blood again you may need to really the easy way is just replace it if it's malpositioned and not drawing blood i would recommend just go and replace it and remember every time do you still need it if you don't please remove it so that's the main thing first of all make sure it's still in the vein very important make sure you hold all medications until you confirm that's in the vein. You don't want the these vasopressors or medication being infiltrated into the skin and subcutaneous tissue, especially vasopressors. Um, malposition, we just talked about on the chest x-ray, if it's malpositions, if it's way deep in the, let's say the right atrium, you pull it back. The problem is by, if it's really high and you need to advance it, Make sure either you are pretty sure that it's the part of the catheter that's outside the skin, they need to advance it. And usually there is a dressing on it. If you're sure about its sterility and you trust it, go ahead and advance, otherwise replace the catheter. Venous thrombosis. Again, it's easier with pick line to suspect because you see the swelling in the arm. But in central line IG and subclavian, mainly you will see facial swelling you know the things that you see with SVC syndrome you may notice those and of course you check for IJ thrombosis and subclavian thrombosis if there is thrombosis of course here you need to treat with anticoagulation and the same thing apply to salvage if you can salvage the catheter great the same thing we said with pick line you can try anticoagulation and keep the catheter as long as it's functioning in good position. And if symptoms worsening, you better just replace and remove it. And remember, do you still need it or not? If not, please remove it. Bacteremia. Again, bacteremia doesn't mean we need to remove the catheter because how many times you have a, a patient who comes, let's say, with pyelonephritis, with septic shock and bacteremia from that, we, they do central line, right? But you need the bacteremia that we think it's related to the central line. If it's related or induced line, that's when we start thinking the same thing, what we call catheter related bacteremia. Again, the same thing that we talk about PIC line can apply here. If the patient is stable, if he's um, hemodynamically stable, if the catheter is in good position and functioning, you may try to salvage that and try um, antibiotic. And as I said, sometimes I ask infectious disease about their opinion. So there is some bacteria like Staph epidermidis, as you know, they will tell you, hey, just go ahead and remove the central line. Of course, they may say, do you really badly, how badly you need it now? You can keep it, but we need to remove it as soon as we can. If the patient is really septic from this catheter related bacteremia, then you have to remove it. Bleeding and bleeding mainly 
during the procedure uh, we talked about it you put a pressure if you hit the artery with the IJ and subclavian it's hard you just to cor need to correct coagulopathy because the anatomy of subclavian it's hard it's not amenable for manual pressure but the other possibility after placement you may notice that it's oozing blood in the around the catheter and the dressing as I said these are critically ill maybe coagulopathic DIC uh, thrombocytopenia so just I think we told the nurses just keep the dressing dry kind of try to change the dressing and sometimes apply pressure to but we don't need to remove the catheter as long as it's functioning removal the rule of thumb if you don't need it I'm just gonna put it need it please remove it uh, so remove it as soon as possible you don't need it and replace it with peripheral catheters and the last things and uh, these things apply for femoral central line as well except the malpositioning but again if the femoral central line is not drawing blood you cannot confirm it what I tell them usually you still can apply the uh, the uh, cath flow for femoral but femoral line usually should not be placed unless it's urgent or emergent because it's faster to put it in and easier but please remove it as soon as possible that area is not going to be sterile as the way you think if the catheter is part of it do not advance it again it's hard to guarantee sterility in that area and if you have the option always go for IJ or subclavian and coagulopathic always go for IJ if you are in an emergent situation or you could not get it in the IJ or subclavian you can go for the femoral 